Okay, just give folks a minute to get in from the waiting room. As a reminder, please mute yourself. Good afternoon. This is an informational session with the Boston Cannabis Board. Today is April 26, 2021. This is the second in a series of informational sessions regarding the application process for a cannabis establishment in Boston, as well as uh, certain uh, applicable changes to the regulations. Today's hearing is being conducted pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing is being recorded and will be posted along with the presentation to the City of Boston's website following today's presentation. We will begin with a presentation um, by the Boston Cannabis Board in the Office of Economic Development, after which we will take questions and answers. Please utilize the chat function if you have a question or wish to uh, utilize the raise hand function. Before we begin, I want to note that we are joined by Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Ms. Joyce is the Chairwoman of the Boston Cannabis Board. We are joined by Jasmine Wynn, the Project Manager from the Boston Cannabis Board, and Attorney Chayla White with the Office of Economic Development. You'll just give me a brief moment. I will share my screen and we will begin with the presentation. I'll now turn it over to Jasmine Wynn, who will discuss the an overview of cannabis establishments in the city of Boston, as well as the application process. Jasmine. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. So cannabis establishments in Boston, former Mayor Walsh and the Boston City Council passed an ordinance establishing the Boston Cannabis Board, also known as the BCB, which is the authority that's tasked with citing cannabis establishments. The BCB consists of five appointed individuals tasked with ensuring equity and the issuance of cannabis licenses, both in terms to whom they are issued to and where they are issued in the city of Boston. Um, pursuant to Mass General Law, Boston must say a minimum of 52 retail recreational dispensaries. This number excludes other cannabis uses such as medical, cultivation, laboratory, manufacturing, and delivery. So this is an overview of our application process. This will be online too, because if you look at it, I know it's a lot of information. <laughs> so the first step is to submit an online application to the BCB. Um, what we are really looking for with the application is obviously the completed online form. Um, you have to disclose all your direct and indirect beneficial interests. Even if a person holds 0.1%, they must be disclosed. And we need a legal right to occupy a space. Um, so that would be a deed, lease agreement, or a letter of intent. And the reason why we will accept a letter of intent, because we know that's an entry of bar and barrier to entry. And we want to get everyone an equal opportunity to open an establishment. Um, next up is inspectional services. You have to file plan plans for cannabis use. Um, all cannabis establishments in the city of Boston are either conditional or forbidding, meaning all will require, require zoning relief. Um, after that, you will get your rejection letter. And after you receive that letter, and we have a letter of intent, a lease agreement, or deed, you can schedule your community meeting. Um, this is a statutory requirement and is the only statutory requirement in order to set up a community meeting. Um, once you have your community meeting, then you will request a letter of support, opposition, or non opposition from the district city councilor. Um, after the city councilor, after the 45, if you, we don't receive anything within the 45 day period, we accept that as a letter as non-opposition and the district city councilor can supplement that the day of the BCB hearing for us. Um, after that, you appear before the BCB um, and that's where you'll have your hearing, present your case to the board. Um, after that, if it's granted, we will execute a host community agreement, which is executed by the law department. Um, basically, that's the agreement that you have with the city and it captures any conditions that would be put on the license that were talked about during the hearing. Um, then you appear before the zoning board of appeals. Um, and then after that, if they grant that, then, it, then you go to obtain your approval from the Cannabis Control Commission. And then after that, it's the build out and final licensure. 
Thank you, Jasmine. And one point uh, we want to make clear in terms of scheduling is that we schedule on a one-to-one -one equity to non-equity basis. So what that means is under our rules and regulations, if you're a certified Boston equity applicant, once you have your completed application, and that includes the city council letter or the 45-day period, if you have that in by the last business day of the month, you will be scheduled for the next month. If you are non-equity, you will be placed in the queue to be heard on the one-to-one -one equity to non-equity ratio based on the date of your application. So at this point, we do have um, many equity applicants going through var various stages of the process, and we have a queue of non-equity applicants who are waiting to be paired. Again, everyone is heard based on their application dates. When evaluating an application before the board, each commissioner reviews the very specific um, requirements for evaluating an application that are outlined in the ordinance that actually created the BCB. The BCB and its staff have created a score sheet which reflects uh, the information that each commissioner must take into consideration when evaluating a proposal. That score sheet and the supporting guidance are also found on the website. Every application is evaluated based on its individual merits pursuant to the ordinance. There's no maximum or minimum score required to be granted a license Instead, the scoring sheet is used by each member of the BCB to guide them in their public deliberations. One of the issues we receive numerous uh, inquiries regarding is the buffer zone. There are two buffer zones that are applicable to cannabis establishments, regardless of license type. The first is the school buffer zone. Pursuant to Massachusetts general law, a cannabis establishment cannot be located within 500 feet of an existing public or private K through school K through 12 school providing education. Recently, the CCC adopted new regulations that impact how that buffer zone is measured. Previously, it was measured 500 feet from lot line of the school to lot line of the proposed cannabis establishment. The new regulations, which the BCB are, is legally obligated to apply, decrease that measurement to the center of the entrance of the proposed cannabis establishment to the center of the entrance of the existing school unless there is an impassable barrier. And when we're reviewing applications, if there is proximity to a school, we do require a certified plot plan and letter from an architect attesting to whether they are, are or aren't in violation of the school buffer zone. The school buffer zone cannot be waived on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you are within 500 feet of an existing school, and again, that does not include playgrounds, that does not include places that children tend to congregate, it is very specific to existing schools providing education. If you are within that 500 feet, you cannot be heard by the board. You will not move forward with the process. However, if you are not within that 500 feet, regardless of the proximity otherwise, whether it's 501 feet to an existing school, you have a due process right to go through the, pro go through the full process and appear before the board. The board absolutely still takes into consideration the proximity to an existing school, as well as it takes into consideration proximity to whether it's a park, a playground, all that can be considered by the board. But what this means is you do have a right to go through the process. The second buffer zone is the half mile buffer zone pursuant, pursuant to the city of Boston's zoning code. And what that means is that under the zoning code, you cannot cite a, an existing cannabis uh, establishment within one half mile of another cannabis establishment. Obviously, given the fact that Boston has a minimum of 52 rec uh, recreational retail dispensaries that it's legally obligated to cite, it would be impossible to cite that many in Boston with the half mile buffer zone. So what the board has done is that it has adopted into its rules and regulations a heightened level of scrutiny because if you are granted a cannabis establishment within a half mile, when you go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, in addition to the underlying use, you also have to obtain a, a variance for the half mile buffer. So the board has adopted a legal standard that mirrors the ZBA standard for a variance. And what that means is when the board's determining whether this is an appropriate site, they look to whether it's an appropriate site, even given the fact that there is an existing cannabis establishment with a half mile. And the board has granted a number of buffer zone variances in applying this heightened scrutiny. Moving forward to what I think a lot of people are on the call today to hear about is the, are the two new cannabis delivery license types. We've received a number of questions about this. 
Um, and please trust us that we're learning with you. Uh, we've worked really closely with the CCC and we're very fortunate to have great partners there um, to help us as we're learning about these two new license types. So there are two new license types as promulgated by the CCC, the cannabis courier model and the cannabis delivery operator. The CCC has implemented a two-step review process for approval of any delivery application. What that means is even before you've gone through the process with the BCB at the local level, you can apply to the CCC for pre-approval. This again, this doesn't guarantee that you're going to be approved at the local level. However, this can streamline your process at the state level because they will review your background information to determine whether you are an appropriate candidate for a uh, delivery license. Following the pre-approval process, you go through the local process. In this case, that is the BCB. After which, you can, if you are granted a license, you can move forward with the final approval uh, at the CCC level. And what's really important to note is that only existing economic empowerment and social equity applicants are eligible for delivery licenses for the next three years. Please, and again, please, uh, if you are on, please mute yourself. Um, it's important to note that economic empowerment and social equity are distinct from the Boston Equity Program. And you cannot be, you, you cannot apply for a delivery application simply because you believe you qualify as EE or SE, you must actually have that certification and the board will request that. The applications for economic empowerment at the state level are closed. And I do not believe at this time there is the intent to reopen that. The applications for social equity status have also been closed, although we do believe that the CCC will be reopening a new cohort of social equity applicants. However, there is not a date for that. So what that means is before you undertake this process, you need to make sure that you have that certification in hand because currently the CCC is not certifying new EE or SME applicants. So moving to the actual delivery license type. The type that is currently permitted is the courier model. And what this model allows is for an approved licensee to pick up cannabis from either a licensed medical or recreational dispensary and deliver direct to consumers. In that instance, you charge an additional fee. There is no wholesaling or storage component with the courier model. This is essentially the Uber Eats of cannabis. You, your delivery drivers are dispatched, they pick up from the cannabis establishment and they deliver direct to consumers. Again, you will have a home base, which is where you store your vehicles, where you conduct your business, and where you dispatch those vehicles from. But there is no cannabis stored at this location at any time. The second uh, type is the delivery operator. And what this model allows is for an, an approved licensee to pick up recreational cannabis, no medical, at either a cultivation or a manufacturing site or from a, a dispensary and it allows you to store, repackage, and sell that cannabis from your wholesale location. And when we say re repackage, that's what you will, uh, is commonly referred to as white labeling the product. So if I have a deliver, delivery operator model, I can go to a wholesale, I can purchase cannabis in bulk, bring it back to my site where I'm storing the cannabis, I can relabel it as whatever my business, um, my business is, and then I sell direct to consumers. Right now, that license type does not exist. It has been adopted by the CCC and the CCC staff is diligently working on creating the application for the delivery operator, which also is commonly referred to as the wholesaler model. But that, light, that application does not exist yet, uh, but it will be online by August at the latest. And we will, um, we will keep everyone up to date as we get more information, and I apologize, uh, that's my dog, as we get more information about when that application will be going live. However, in the meantime, we're happy to discuss any uh, questions with applicants about this license type, even though you can't currently apply. Um, it's also worth noting that the courier model and the delivery operator model may be co-located at the same facility. However, those are two separate processes unless you're undertaking them at the same time. So if you start now with the courier model and in six months want to go to the delivery uh, operator model, that will require a new community process, a new hearing before the board, and a new host community agreement. 
The BCB at its April 28th voting hearing will consider a draft amendment to its rules and regulations that would require any dispensary within the city of Boston to obtain approval prior to engaging with a delivery licensee. Uh, should the board make a motion to move forward with this draft amendment, it would be open to a public comment period and a hearing would be held. The reason for this is currently the way that delivery operates. If you have a delivery license in another city, you can come into Boston and obtain your product from any of our dispensaries or manufacturers and deliver direct to consumers either in Boston or outside of Boston. We have no regulatory authority over those licensees that are not cited within the city. And what the thought of this draft amendment is, is it would give us more control in ensuring that the dispensary has everything in place to properly run a delivery program. Obviously, if someone with a delivery license in Chelsea comes into an East Boston dispensary and you know, lines up their vehicles um, in a way that's not appropriate or negatively impacts the community, we have no regulatory authority over that delivery license. What we do have regulatory authority over is the actual dispensary itself. So that's something that we've been working on at the board staff level and with the CCC to ensure that the board has the ability to regulate what at the end of the day is actually impacting people in the city of Boston. And I'm now going to ask attorney Chayla White with the Office of Economic Development to provide some information about the equity program. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so uh, former Mayor Walsh, along with the city council, um, put forth an ordinance that established the equitable regulation of, can of the cannabis industry in the city of Boston to counteract the devastating impacts of the war on drugs, which disproportionately affected people of color, particularly Black, Latino, and Asian residents um, living in the neighborhoods of Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan. Um, so the equity program offers both technical assistance and funding. Um, the first slide discusses the technical assistance program, which provides assistance with business operations, including the development of a business plan, uh, recruiting employees, the uh, assistance throughout the application process, uh, assistance with, tech with legal compliance, accounting and tax preparedness, best practices for operating in the marijuana industry, um, and technical assistance with store security, and also assistance in identifying and raising funds and capital um, and also identifying vendors. So that's some of the, um, some of the assistance that the uh, technical assistance program will offer to applicants and licensees. Um, our uh, technical assistance program is in its infancy right now. So uh, the city is still um, onboarding vendors, but uh, we are accepting applications from certified equity applicants. Next slide, please. Okay, and then we have the equity fund. Um, so the equity fund, similar to the technical assistance program, is only um, available to certified applicants, um, certified equity applicants. Uh, right now we have a limited amount of funding that is available. Um, for things such as rent, um, salaries. Um, the only thing that really isn't included would be um, anything that could be resold. So uh, the funding does not cover things such as product or uh, paraphernalia. And uh, I can answer any questions about the equity program or the equity fund once the question period starts. Thank you, Shayla. Um, and we know that's a lot of information. We, we are going to be posting this uh, PowerPoint as well as um, the recording of this hearing to the website. And again, the, the board staff is always here to answer any questions. Um, we will now open it up to uh, any questions. You can either utilize the chat to request to speak or you can use the raised hand function with any questions you have. No questions. I find that. Hey, Leslie, how are you? Uh, Hi, first Angela, how are you? And 
Um, so I'm just curious, um, how many people, and is that public knowledge, how many people you have on your wait list uh, for social equity um, participants that are waiting to get approval from you all? So in terms, there's no wait list on the equity side. Um, if you are an equity applicant, you, for purposes of scheduling, you are moved to the front of the line once you have a completed application. Um, everything is public record, and we're currently working with OED to get up online the, um, the public list of all current and pending applications. Um, so we're working with IT to get that in a way that provides all the information that would be helpful uh, to applications. In terms of non-equity, we have approximately 13 in the queue, uh, dating back to uh, as early as 2018. Uh, and again, everyone is scheduled based on their application date. Um, and again, if you are an equity applicant, you get to the front of the line. So there is no equity queue. I understand. All right. And you have no current equity people that are applying. Is that my understanding? Oh, no, you know, we have many equity uh, many. equity applicants. The, the number okay. of agenda items for any given month is going to be dependent on the number of equity applicants who have a completed application. Uh, okay. if, if we have two applications, we've had months where we've had one uh, equity okay. applicant with a completed application. We've had months where we've had five. Um, and those have been some very lengthy hearings. But, you know, the board and Chairwoman Joyce is, is committed to ensuring that equity applicants uh, are the priority are you, when we're are, amazing so i mean i really just appreciate you guys setting these things up um the more information the better and as much as i can push this on a social equity i will you guys are doing a great job building up um a, a great network in boston to protect protect social equity so i appreciate it leslie thank you very much thanks angela thank um, we have a question in the chat uh is the application for delivery businesses closed no, the application for delivery has just started, but the important distinction is that you must be a current economic empowerment or social equity applicant. It cannot be that you believe you qualify because currently the CCC is not processing new EE or SE, economic empowerment or social equity applicants. Again, they may reopen the social equity portion, but at this time they have not. So if you are interested in delivery, you have to be currently certified as either social equity or economic empowerment. Um, and I should have noted previously with equity applicants for delivery at this stage, while they do go to the front of the line in terms of scheduling with the courier model, and we actually just heard our first courier delivery applicant, we do not count them for purposes of the one-to-one -one equity to non-equity ratio. Meaning that an equity applicant for courier delivery only is not paired with a non-equity applicant. And the reason for that is that the Boston City Council has undertaken um, a, a potential amendment to the ordinance that would carve out those courier delivery models. And, and not to speak for the council, but I believe the concern is the courier delivery has a very low barrier to entry. Um, and that's intentional. And that's part of the reason that, that for the next three years that it's only equity, social equity and economic empowerment. But obviously you don't want only equity applicants to have the courier model and non-equity applicants to have a uh, recreational cannabis dispensary. So that it, it has been intentional by the board in an effort to adhere to the spirit of the ordinance. And we received a question uh, requesting clarification whether there will be more equity applicant approvals from the CCC. And we know this is confusing and, and I think we cannot say it enough. There's an important difference between Boston equity, right? Boston equity is very specific to the ordinance and there's, there's no wiggle room. It is that 51% or more of your ownership interest qualifies with three or more of the very specific items in the ordinance. So equity applications for the purposes of the BCB, again, get you the front of the line for scheduling purposes. They also allow you to access the TA and equity funds. You can be economic empowerment and you can be social equity, which are both state designations and not qualify under the Boston ordinance. So that, that's important to know. We are continuously reviewing and certifying equity applicants. And, and when I say we, I mean, Attorney Chayla White in the Office of Economic Development. In terms of economic empowerment and social equity, those are state designations and the review and certification is done by the state. Those applications are currently not open. So you either applied and were certified as economic empowerment or social equity previously, or you cannot apply for delivery at this time. We do understand that the state is considering reopening social equity, 
but at this time we don't have a date for when that may happen. Uh, if we do receive notification, we will of course push it out to all of our various lists, but that's why it's so important when you're determining whether you are actually going to apply for a delivery license, whether it's career or wholesale model, that you make sure you have that actual certification because we wouldn't want someone spending time, money and energy trying to go through the process if you aren't qualified. And again, that, that's pursuant to, to the state's requirements. We don't have any flexibility on that. We received a question, are there any additional taxes for cannabis delivery? There are no taxes, and again, this is all being still worked out between the CCC and the Department of Revenue. There are no additional taxes for the courier model. However, they do believe there will be additional sales taxes for the wholesale model. And that is still being worked out. And again, we'll provide information as it becomes available. If you are a CCC social equity applicant, can you apply for the Boston for Boston's equity program? You can apply. Being a certified social equity applicant at the state level is not one of the qualifications for the Boston equity program. So you can be social equity and you may qualify under a number of other um, requirements pursuant to the ordinance, but social equity is not one of those requirements. Economic empowerment is one of those with certain uh, with certain caveats. So Chela works very proactively with any applicant. If you have questions about whether you qualify, she will provide you with the step-by-step -step list of, of how you could qualify and she will work through that with you. Um, and, and we understand again with the different types of equity that it can become confusing, but we're, um, we are, uh, we're here to work with you with any questions. We have a question of, does the board have a number of completed equity applicants for May, uh, for the May hearing? I do not off the top of my head. I know that there is at least one. Um, we have until the last business day of the month for uh, equity applicants to complete the process. Again, there are a number of equity applicants in various stages of the process. Some are waiting on um, to schedule their community meeting and the mayor's office of neighborhood services has been phenomenal uh, in working to get these meetings scheduled as quickly as possible. Some are just beginning the process. Uh, so there are a number of equity applicants just in various uh, phases. I can, I can say that we have at least one confirmed for the May hearing. Uh, we received a question uh, about the delivery access to consumers. Is the no drug to school zones obeyed regarding delivery? For example, if there's a delivery scheduled within a school zone, is there a protocol in place to ensure it meets the school zone law? That's a very good question. Uh, I have not actually had that, nor have I discussed it, uh, nor have we discussed it with the CCC, but that is something that we can absolutely bring up and get back to. I will say that delivery is highly regulated. There must be two drivers in each vehicle at all times. The vehicles are tracked and there are cameras both within the vehicle and um, on the person of the delivery drivers. So it is incredibly regulated at the state level. Uh, but we are, fair. if you could put your um, contact information in the chat, we're happy to look into that and get back to you. That's a great question. We had an app uh, question regarding whether there are, are any updates on social consumption. Uh, not at this time, we would encourage you to reach out to the CCC. Boston was not one of the municipalities that opted into the pilot program for social consumption, which I, I do not believe has been undertaken yet. I believe the CCC is still continuing to study that. So I would, I would direct you to reach out to the CCC, but right now in Boston, that's not something that's being considered. Uh, we have a question, if I am already an existing Boston cannabis retailer and want to add a courier license to your business, do you need to go through the, the delivery application in its entirety? Yes, you do. Yeah, you still need to go through the full process. And we have another question about the half mile buffer zone. And again, we, we know this is, this is confusing. Under the zoning code, you cannot locate one cannabis establishment within a half mile, one half mile of an existing cannabis establishment. What we have done is put in place a process by which you can apply and you are considered with a heightened level of scrutiny for a license for a cannabis establishment, even though you are within a half mile. 
if you are granted based on that heightened level of scrutiny a license by the board when you go to the zoning board of appeals you will need in addition to the underlying use which is either conditional or forbidden you will need a variance for the buffer zone if you are approved by the bcb i then work with and jasmine win on our staff works with each applicant and the zba to ensure that when it, that your refusal letter because your refusal letter will say you're it's a conditional use or it's a forbidden use we work with uh, the ZBA and ISD to ensure that your refusal letter is amended to also reflect that half mile buffer zone variant so that you don't have to start the process with the ZBA over again. And let me just look. I see that John Bookston has his hand raised. John, would you like to unmute yourself? Yep, thank you very much. Um, I live in the East Fenway, and a new establishment was just uh, approved despite huge neighborhood um, disapproval. It's a terrible site, both for traffic and uh, was opposed by Berkeley because Berkeley buildings are on <laughs> both Mr. sides of it. Mr. Bookson, I'm going to stop you right, right there. Happy to take any process or procedural questions, but we're not going to go into the merits of any uh, previously considered or future applications. So if you have a possible question, happy, happy if we could move on to that, please. Yeah, what the protections do uh, neighborhoods have for poorly um, located and too many uh, establishments? And the, the BCB takes every uh, applicant and considers it on its individual merits. 20% of what the BCB is tasked with considering is community feedback and public support. So that's absolutely one of the things that, that uh, this board considers. The city of Boston is legally obligated to cite a minimum of 52 cannabis establishments in the city. And that does not include medical, that does not include uh, lab testing, that does not include delivery, that does not include manufacturing. So the BCB is tasked with ensuring these are appropriately cited in terms of time, place, and manner. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we, we have a question. Someone has a specific question about whether he apply, uh, he, whether he qualifies for the equity program. Uh, Duane, I would encourage you, uh, we'll put the contact information in the chat to reach out and we're happy to uh, review your, um, you, whether your qualifications. Um, we have a question, can people have cannabis delivery to open space? Absolutely not. Uh, you absolutely cannot, it has to be delivered to an actual physical location and that is very closely tracked. Um, we, again, we received another question about a specific application. Um, John Mack, please reach out directly to the board and we can uh, advise regarding the status of that. Those are all the questions in the chat. Are there any other questions? Just wanna make sure no one has their hand raised who have missed. If you have a question and I have not called on you, you please feel free to unmute yourself. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Hi, I was just, my question was as a mass state social equity applicant living and born in Roxbury. So that doesn't qualify you to be a Boston cannabis social equity program. That's what you were saying. Or I, I misunderstood what you were saying. It may social equity uh, status as a social equity applicant in, in and of itself does not qualify you, to, qualify you to be equity. It's not something in the ordinance that um, is one of the qualifying factors, but we'd ask you to reach out to the board and we're happy to, uh, Chayla White who's on this call can also um, advice, but we'll, we're happy to speak to you about your specific call. Okay, Scott, I thought you were saying only social equity candidates can apply for the operator licenses now. Only at, at the state level, only social equity and economic empowerment applicants can apply for a delivery uh, license for the next three years. But that doesn't have any effect with being from Roxbury and trying to apply for the Boston equity program. I, I would urge you to reach out directly to the board and we can provide you with um, with a breakdown of what would qualify you and we'll work with you to determine whether or not you qualify. Under okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, we received an additional question. Do you consider a location such as the YMCA, um, which is not technically a school, 
Uh, absolutely, the, the board is again, the citing authority to determine the appropriate time, place and manner. And while the proximity of a YMCA does not exclude you from going through the process, it is absolutely something that the board will take, each commissioner will take into consideration. Uh, Pam Mullaney has her hand raised. Thank you. Um, just, I'm sorry if I miss this, just um, interested in a little- in, One second, in, buddy, one second. In understanding a little bit more about the, um, the school buffer zone. Um, is that, I assume that's not a retroactive requirement is one question, um, if, if that is the case. Um, and then secondly is, how does the Office of Neighborhood Services get in, like who measures that? And is the understanding now from the state that it's from at the center of both doors? So those are my questions about that. And I can put the regulation um, in the chat. It's very lengthy and I'll ask Jasmine to pull uh, for us what the specific, um, what the specific site is, but it, it changes the way it's measured. And uh, we have had two applications that previously could not move through the process because of the, because of the measurement that can now move toward, through the process. So when we receive an application, we review its proximity to both, the board reviews its proximity to both existing cannabis establishments as well as schools. If there are questions raised, um, and many times it's from the community, we proactively work with uh, ISD to determine what the legal underlying use is. Uh, I can tell you that for the two applications that previously could not move forward that now can with the new measurement, We've also consulted with the CCC and we've required an architect to sign a letter explaining how they qualify. Again, that doesn't mean it's an appropriate site. It just means that where previously they could not go through the process to be considered by the board, now they have a legal right to do so. And so once those regulations were promulgated in December uh, and we had, we had lengthy conversations uh, with the CCC with internally with legal counsel to, to determine how we, what our obligation was to apply those. And under state law, we do have an, a legal obligation to uh, apply the new regulations. Thank you very much. Not a problem. I see that Ben W has his hand raised. Hi, Secretary Hawkins. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, go over that thorough presentation and answering all our questions. Um, I do have one question about the process for um, non-social equity applicants. Um, you said that social equity applicants do have a prioritization over um, the non-social equity applicants. Um, is there sort of like how, I know you said it's by date. So um, say if you apply later, um, like how is the date determined? Like if you get all the completed documents, um, is it like first come first serve or is it determined maybe because I know there's some priority review for the CCC has a priority review for some applicants. So does it depend on that as well? So the CCC's review is entirely separate. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I just want to emphasize there's a difference between equity at the city level and then social equity and economic empowerment, which are the state's designation. At the city level, if you are a certified equity applicant, once you have a completed application, you are put in line for the next hearing. And those application dates, uh, those dates that, that the board looks to are the date of your initial application, the date of your filing with inspectional services, and when you've completed uh, the process. And we try and do this in as transparent as and predictable a way as we can. Uh, when we're looking on the non-equity side, again, it's the same series of dates that we look at. It's just that with a one-to-one -one ratio, we have more non-equity who've been in the queue than we have had equity to date. And again, we have equity applicants coming in, new applications on a regular basis. We encourage everyone to apply, whether you're non-equity or equity. But in terms of scheduling, when you're in that non-equity queue, we look to when you applied, when you filed with ISD, and when you completed the process to ensure that you're, you're placed in the queue in an appropriate manner. Understood. Thank you. And is there any more information on that one-to-one -one ratio, like on their website? Yeah, it's, found, it's in our rules and regulations, and it's okay. also found in the ordinance that created the board. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hope you have a great day. Not a problem. Um, we have a question for equity applicants that have been approved. How can we access technical assistance? Uh, reach out to the board and we will put you in touch with uh, Midori Morikawa from the, the interim director of uh, the Office of Economic Development, as well as attorney Chayla White. And we can, um, we can help you access those funds. As attorney White stated, this program is in its infancy. So it's not as though there is um, an endless amount of funds, but we, 
you know, we do want to be as helpful as possible in connecting you with that. So please feel free to reach out. Uh, we received another question about the half mile buffer zone. Is it is the half mile buffer zone measured by a straight line? Yes, the half mile buffer zone is measured by a straight line that is different again from the school buffer zone, which is a creation of state law and the CCC. The half mile buffer zone is limited. That's a creation of Boston. That's something that only exists here in Boston. Are there any other questions? All right, again. Um, yes, I got one more. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Once you put your application in, how long does it usually take to get approved as a social equity candidate? Uh, well, the, the equity, uh, the review of, of Boston equity, it, it's essentially how quickly you provide all the requested documents. Uh, Attorney White is regularly reviewing these, um, but we we can't we can't predict how long it's going to take you to be able to give the documents that we legally need in order to certify you. Yeah, so everything's on a case by case basis. Okay, well, I was wondering, for instance, the first phrase was you submit it, then you go to the next step. So after you submit it, to the time it's actually completed, you know how long it usually. It, everything, everything is on a basis. We have people who apply and they immediately provide all the necessary documentation to be certified, and then we have people who um, who have not have asked to be equity and have not provided documentation. So it, again, it, it's it's a thorough review process, um, but it, we can't predict how long it will take. We, we move as quickly as, as the applicant moves. Uh, we have uh, an inquiry how many shops are allowed in each district there is no minimum or maximum um, based on the the number of 52 these are going to be cited in every city through or in every neighborhood throughout the city and uh, part of what the board is tasked with again as, as jasmine Wynn noted is um, equity both in to whom these licenses go to and how they're distributed the the ordinance very specifically and the board very specifically does not want to see one neighborhood housing all of these but there will be multiple establishments in every neighborhood. All right, are there any other questions that I've missed? All right, well, thank you all. We, um, we greatly appreciate everybody logging on and we will do another one of these um, in the near future. Uh, this again will be, has been recorded and will be posted to the city's website along with the PowerPoint. So thank you all. Thank you to uh, Chairwoman Joyce who joined us. Attorney Kayla White and Jasmine Wynn, our wonderful project manager. All right, thank you all.